Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another video. Once again, looking at a new servant just released on the LB 6.5 Part 2 banner. This is Jimbo Lily himself, James Moriarty. Uh, unlike the other two new servants, I'm probably not butchering his name. But this is Ruler James. Um, very interesting design in a lot of different ways, both in gameplay and aesthetic. We are not here to talk about the aesthetic. We are here to talk about the gameplay. So let's look at what makes James Moriarty tick. So this is James Moriarty. Uh, HP to attack scales heavily towards HP on the ratio. Triple arts deck. Uh, four hits on all cards except for his extra, which is five. Star weight is directly in the middle of the road at 100. Um, this is a very interesting servant, and the Bond CE, which we'll talk about soon, uh, encapsulates that pretty well, but let's get through this. Before we do, I want to make something clear. The application of one alignment does not negate another, all right? The application of one alignment attribute, etc., does not negate another. Just hold on to that. Tuck it in your back pocket. On this first skill though, six turn cooldown at level 10, two time over three turn evade, that's pretty good. Three turn uh, sure hit, that's pretty good. And then he applies arts resist down on all enemies, 10 to 20%. And then applies further arts resist down for 10 to 20% against evil alignment enemies. Okay, remember that. On his second skill, 20 to 30% on quick arts and buster. Remember he has a triple arts deck. Um, and then crit damage up. It's 20 to 30%. All of these are three turns. It's a six turn cooldown. Uh, this is uh, this skill is probably uh, among the biggest question marks in his kit, I would say. It's not necessarily bad. It's a 20 to 30% arts buff. For all intents and purposes, this is a 20 to 30% arts buff and a 20 to 30% crit buff for him. On this third skill here, it's a 30 to 50% battery on a six turn cooldown. Not bad at all. Um, it also applies either Arts up 500% Star Gather uh, for a turn or Buster up 500% um, Star Gather for a turn uh, and a 10 to 20% Star Bomb. That's interesting. That's pretty good. Uh, it allows him to really ramp things up one way or another, especially if you are looking to crit after his NP with an NP Arts Arch Chain. Speaking of the NP, the intricacy is really coming out now. He applies NP damage up for himself 20 to 40% for a turn, scales with overcharge. He does super effective damage for 150% against all good enemies. He has a skill seal on them as well. And he applies evil alignment to anyone who's still living. Okay, so the logic here is uh, if they're a good enemy or a set of enemies, like he's going to hit them hard, then he will seal their skills so they can't cleanse a debuff. Um, and then he will add evil alignment to them for three turns. The reason that matters is because on this first skill, um, you have now given a 40% arts resist down to that enemy or enemies that survived this NP. In the game's damage algorithm, that's the same as a 40% arts up buff for himself. Uh, when you combine that with this right here, you're looking at a 70%, theoretically speaking, arts up buff for himself. All right, that's that's pretty attractive, honestly. Not to mention his 30 to 50% battery uh, and the evade. It's a pretty well-rounded kit. He has survivability. Um, he has buffs in a few different ways, right? Um, ultimately speaking, when it comes to multiplicative damage, um, it's NP damage up, super effective. Uh, and then these card color buffs, additionally, he has the crit buff, right? There's no attack up, um, but there's also not really like a need to have that, in my opinion. Um, he's going to trot out there. He's going to NP with his arts NP, um, potentially use his arts cards to follow up uh, and then carry on about his way. Um, as far as an order of operations goes, I think it's pretty clear that you're going to use um, the third skill, because you can gain stars and focus where they go, assuming you've got the arts cards, you can guide them to the arts cards, try to get some crits after the NP in case he does not kill, since it will be most likely neutral damage. Um, and you could even pop this as well to get things going in a double cast story system. Um, based on what I have seen, is he capable of looping? Yes. Is it the easiest thing in the world? I would not say so. 
as you can see here the 0.37 percent np gain on four hits that's not that's not anything special whatsoever um i'm just gonna be really honest with you however um this is double castoria we're talking about if there's a will there's a way um so you can definitely three turn loop with him you're probably going to need to start with a 50 percent ce rather than a black rail or something like that in fact i can almost guarantee it uh, but that being said it's still there it's 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 a thing it's possible right so again when we talk about what we're looking at for uh on the skill order obviously the battery's got to go first it has a scaling star bomb and battery that's got to happen um the second skill and the first skill are kind of player dependent i would actually recommend the first skill before the second skill this looks great hey i've got a tri-color buff and a crit damage buff all right he's super powerful no no honestly this kind of reminds me of uh archer emia having a arts buff uh, back in the day on his skill obviously that's been buffed twice i'm not saying this needs a buff obviously the dude just got released but it's kind of reminiscent of that where it's like okay but i don't really need that um what he wants is this and this that's basically it right so um skill three i would argue skill one it's survivability it's decent it's also sure hit but this is the big thing the ability to apply potentially 40 percent uh arts resist down on ev evil alignment enemies that you have just created with this np i think that's pretty nice one thing to note about him that i think is supremely interesting it's really cool this passive over here he is immune to charm confusion terror and skill seal what he is he's immune to charm confusion terror and skill seal uh he also has a new hybrid form of territory creation here where it's not only arts but it's also np damage up all right pretty cool and then not surprisingly without spoiling anything his third append is anti-ruler i think that's interesting uh over on the traits he does have uh, a pretty straightforward set of traits here right um i think that could be surprising to some people who played 6.5 again we won't go into that from a material perspective he's a ruler so it's really really attractive uh to be able to get this guy and raise him up if you have done a lottery presumably 50 boxes or more you're probably going to be able to handle getting him up to skill level seven that's one of my favorite things about rulers one lottery and you're good to go with them right um however after that 36 of these i i, I mean again they just the, every 6.5 servant it seems like they want you to spend weeks farming for them i don't really understand it because they all require so much uh, not to mention 15 eggs uh it's it's whatever um, the ascension is extremely straightforward due to him being a ruler though so let's talk about what can, what can we get away with here right do we have to have all these skills at level 10 where can we have some wiggle room this obviously needs to be level 10 it's a 30 to 50 percent battery not only for the reduced cooldown because he does have decent survivability but the 50 percent battery and the star bomb right after that it's really again it's up to the player um you don't necessarily have to take skill two up to level 10 i would argue it's fine uh at what did we say level eight right or sorry level seven so at level seven uh where the gem spree dies off you're still looking at 26 percent is it really worth going from 26 percent to 30 percent at the cost of 36 per scale of this i just would argue that it's not especially if you've rolled a lot on the 6.5 banners right so i think it's totally reasonable to leave these at level seven over on the first skill leaving this at level seven is a little bit obtuse just because uh this is a one percent difference right here the cooldown does not change for something that does not scale right presumably you might want the survivability uh to come around a little more often not to mention the fact that because it's two times over three turns you're looking at three turns of downtime at level 10 to me that just feels a lot nicer than having a fourth turn or even worse five turns of downtime ultimately though uh he's a very interesting servant um he from a design perspective is uh how do i say this uh eclectic not in a bad way um he's literally carrying around like i don't know whatever anyway uh we're not here to talk about the aesthetic 
Uh, one thing to note on his Bond CE, we talked about the alignments. Um, he has special damage up against good and evil uh, with his Bond CE. Because of the fact that he's an arts AoE, you're probably not going to take his uh, Bond CE no matter what. Um, but all in all, like pretty solid kit. This guy is going to be a lot of people's favorite servant uh, due to the popularity of James Moriarty. Um, not to mention the execution of 6.5. Um, I don't really think that this guy like tips the scales either way. He's not going to become anybody's go-to arts looper per se. Typically, when we talk about a limited SSR, we talk about value. We talk about are you getting your money's worth? Um, is this a limited SSR? Notable examples of late, we looked at uh, Constantine, to me, does not strike me as a good bargain, uh, a limited SSR type of kit, right? Uh, on the other hand, we do have a limited SSR here that I truly believe deserves that designation, that rarity. Um, I think he's going to be worth it for people who do decide to roll for him. I hope they all get him, obviously. Um, but you're looking at somebody who not only brings uh, a unique playstyle to the game, an arts AOE ruler, cool, we love getting new things in the game, um, but overall, like, it's just a solid kit. It's a solid kit. There's not really anything lacking in here. Uh, obviously, as a ruler, he's not going to go out and have class advantage a lot of the time anyway, but he can apply a lot of different uh, buffs to himself and debuffs to the enemy with this. Uh, to give himself extra access to increased damage. He can survive along the way as well. Something to note that probably stuck out to you, um, if you have Sherlock Holmes, Holmes has an evade. This is a three turn sure hit. Uh, Holmes obviously is a ruler class. There's anti-ruler right here. It's the, it's pretty, pretty straightforward what's going on here. Um, these aren't really going to be affected by a Holmes, um, except for the NP seal that he has. But this has a skill seal, so it's pretty clear that this guy wants to be a hard counter to Sherlock Holmes. All in all, though, interesting servant. Uh, I think he brings something cool to the game uh, as an arts AoE ruler. He is a selfish ruler. We don't typically see that, but it makes perfect sense when we know his context, right? Um, I think he's worth the I think he's worth the value if you decide to go for him uh, as a five star limited servant. Pretty solid, not game changing, but that's okay. They don't all have to be that. Thanks for watching. Uh, once again, I look forward to the next one of these videos. If you like this, of course, please do subscribe. Uh, anytime there is a new servant and I'm able to do the video, I'm going to do these analytic breakdown uh, videos where we walk through, look at their kit, talk about what's good, what's not good, um, things like that. Uh, additionally, you can catch us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tarquedo, uh, where we, we stream FGO, Genshin, and variety content. Not to mention twitter.com slash Tarquedo. Also, you can catch me in the Discord. Yada, yada. You're not watching this anymore. So I will see you on the next video. Take care of yourself. Thanks for being here. Have fun with Jimbo. Later.